Attila Total War is one of the best Total Wars by far, in my opinion. The graphics, the mechanics, the logic all triumphs over its predecessor, Rome 2. Given the scale of a the map, there is much more variety and so replayability among the other factions, unlike in Shogun 2. Its lack of heroes also gives it a plus over Three Kingdoms Total War for the general historical Total War fan out there. And Thrones of Britannia? Well, no competition really. Overall, this is clear with the modding community, with most of the big overhaul mods such as Rise of Mordor, Medieval 1212 AD and Ancient Empires releasing or being updated recently for Attila Total War. Of course, Rome 2 has great mods as well, but it is the Attila ones that are by far the most popular. Although Rome 2 does get more players, Generally, the view account is higher for Attila-related content over Realm 2 content. And yet, despite all of this, there is one obvious issue. It's player base. Although it is not that bad, it is still lower than Realm 2 Total War. Why is this? Attila Total War suffers from one simple weakness. A weakness mentioned in a top 5 video a few days ago. The weakness is with its day one, not the game's launch, but the first time a player loads in. Let's take a look at Rome 2 Talk to War, and assume the first thing the player does is play the campaign. Instantly, they load in and see the main faction they are probably there for, Rome. However, there's many other reliable options as well. Carthage, the Seleucid Empire, Egypt, to name a few. Decent sized starting settlements that are reasonably balanced and great for guiding a new player into the game. Let's go further back. Rome 1. You have to play as a Roman family. Again, an easy way to guide you into the game. Medieval 2 Total War. You can pick from a list of 5 factions. Again, like Rome 2, each start with a fair amount of land and are all great at introducing a new player. This is perfected in one title in particular, Shogun 2. Same again, everyone starts off very simple and balanced. This is actually the reason Total War Shogun exists. A major reason why they chose the Shogun era and I guess the Japanese island back when making Shogun 1 was because it was at a, a place and a time where literally any faction had the chance to win and claim power. It was balanced. And that is where Attila fails. Day one, the player tries to start a campaign, but you are literally starting at the end. It's not the rise of Rome, the start of the Shogun Wars, or the eve of feudalism. It starts up at a messed up end, the fall of Rome. The player loads up the campaign, and here is what they see. The Huns as the first option. The Huns are the Horde faction, Many stacks to manage and like nothing ever experienced before in Total War. Meaning the player has no familiarity at all with this faction. They have nothing really to compare it to. Also Total War and what makes it great is it's about empire building. Not bringing an empire down. A Total War player launching Attila for the first time will therefore not feel at home with the Huns. Okay, so they don't want to play as the Huns, or really any hard faction for that matter. Maybe they will, I'm just talking about the general community on their first time and my own experience. So what else is open? The Romans. But loading up the Western Roman Empire is like having a little kid ask you for help with Bloons Tower Defense, and you sit down and suddenly find yourself round 20 and the person before you had no clue what he was doing. Not the place you want to be. Western and Eastern Rome bombard the player with far too much, especially as a first playthrough, and are enough to turn anyone away from the game. Okay, so, many suggest the Sassanids, and although I would say they are an easy campaign, 
The game really does not direct the player into picking them, having it on the end. Also, it is not one I would advise for a first Let's Play. It's a little bit more complex with all the vassals and the politics like that. That then leaves just two factions, the Saxons and the Franks, two one-state barbarian factions. These, in my opinion, are the best choice and are where I started, but it is still far from a great experience. The Franks border the mighty Roman Empire on one side, and then, on the other, the powerful Saxons. The Saxons start right in the middle of the map, completely surrounded. I don't believe this is a good start for new players. Also, as it means they have to focus on every front all the time and cannot be, cannot be allowed to mess up due to them only having one settlement. Remember, the player would have no knowledge that a faction can become a horde or how the hordes even work. I would say the Franks are the best option, but compared to other titles, there's nothing great to get the player into the game, and this, in my opinion, is the only major place where a Total War fails, and why its player base suffers. Because many people never got past the first step of learning how to play. If you want to know how I learnt, I had to install mods that broke the Roman Empire apart. So I was still playing as Rome, but with something much smaller and easier to manage. That worked perfectly for me. Okay, well this video is not just a rant video. It actually has a purpose. The first part is going to be a way how this could have been fixed for Attila Total War. I thought for a while about this and there only seemed to be one way. And it's all in the Celts DLC. The Celts are the perfect starter factions as they tick all the boxes. They start in Britain, meaning they are British and so naturally superior in every way. Number two. Nah, just joking. Being in Britain means they have a natural defence on the seas, which is very good for new players, as it means they have to focus on less fronts. 2. It's balanced. Yes, the Western Roman Empire is there, but only with the British bit, which overall is just as powerful as any other faction on the island. The Western Roman Empire is not going to be invested in defending this front. There's a variety of factions to pick from in this region. The Picts, the Ebdanians and the Caledonians. Each fun and unique. Now, sadly these factions are part of a DLC, the Celts Culture Pack, but if these factions were available from the start and appeared first in the campaign menu list, as in CA was hinting at new players to pick one of these, then I believe the new players to Attila would have picked up the game much faster and enjoyed the game much more. Instead of having to try the same campaign hundreds of times over to just see how they survive the first few turns or have to scour the workshop for mods. These factions should have been the starter factions available for all day one on release, and I think this would have fixed Attila Total War's day one weakness. And maybe so they don't lose money, put some of the migration factions behind a paywall instead, to make up for it. This, I believe, would have made a much better Attila Total War. Okay, so, point two. And now I want to talk about Total War Troy. In my opinion, the first campaign a player experiences is critical to whether they are going to play more or not. Total War Troy, in my opinion, cannot start during the war. Rise of Rome, start of the Shogun Wars, start of the Third Coalition War are perfect starts in Total War titles, but the fall of Rome is not. Therefore, in my opinion, it would be best if Total War Troy actually began before Troy, before Helen left with Paris at a time of peace, to ease the player in, then relations are formed, and then the main event triggers. This will also make each playthrough unique to the last, as the sides for teams will all be different. 
but to start the player off having to already set out on their epic quest before they can learn the basics would be a mistake. Also, the game needs the starter factions, which is something Warhammer titles have done incredibly well. But I fear the Troy map will have more of an Attila style, starting too late into the game. I think there should be one or two factions that everyone can start with to get a grasp on the basics, but are still not tutorials. How or which faction, I have no idea as I have no idea how the game will look or play out. Maybe they already have this in place, and I hope they do. Either way, I wanted to stress the importance of this, and why I think it was a major blow on Attila Total War, but also give some thoughts on how to fix it, and what can be learnt from this going forwards. That's been everything for today's video. I hope you enjoyed, or perhaps learnt something, Please subscribe for more and share with anyone you think may be interested. Until the next one, I've been Melkar, goodbye.